So there are five compartments, it's stomach, duodenum, enterocyte, blood and peripheral tissues. We intake iron by diet. We have two major dietary iron sources, it's meat and in meat we consume iron in form of him. Recall that meat is basically skeletal muscles and skeletal muscles contain a lot of myoglobin and one of the components of the myoglobin is him. Also we intake iron with consumption of some vegetables and in vegetables iron is in plus 3 state. So for example we intake iron in both him form and inorganic plus 3 form. Initially food is transported to the stomach. Him do not undergo any changes, but iron with plus 3 charge undergo oxidation by hydrochloric acid. And recall that hydrochloric acid is produced by parietal cells of the stomach. Parietal cells transport hydrogen protons into the gastric lumen by hydrogen potassium ATPase. And in the stomach lumen hydrochloric acid oxidizes most of the iron molecules to plus 2 charge. So into the duodenum income him, a high amount of iron with plus 2 charge and a minor portion of iron with plus 3 charge. In the duodenal lumen, enterocytes have to absorb these iron products. And this absorption is provided by two transporters. It's him transporter that transports him molecules into the enterocyte and divalent metal transporter 1 that transports divalent iron which is iron with plus 2 charge. So it turns out that iron with plus 3 charge cannot be absorbed, because enterocytes do not have a proper transporter. So how these iron molecules can be absorbed? The concept is that enterocytes have a specific molecule called duodenal cytochrome B. Cytochrome B can oxidize iron with plus 3 charge in the duodenal lumen into plus 2 charge, and now iron can be absorbed by DMT1 transporter. Inside the enterocyte, heme is degraded into protoporphyrin and iron, and all iron molecules inside the enterocyte bind to a specific protein called apoferritin with formation of a ferritin. Ferritin is basically a deposition of iron molecules, where iron is stored until our organism will require additional iron. So in form of ferritin, also called mucosal ferritin, iron is stored in the enterocyte. And if iron is needed, mucosal ferritin release iron, the transportation of iron into the blood occurs by a transporter called ferroportin. Ferroportin basically push iron from enterocyte into the blood. And in the blood iron immediately binds to a transferrin. Transferrin is a protein that transports iron in the blood. Generally in the blood we have one iron molecule for three transferrin molecules and transferrin delivers iron to peripheral tissues, where transferrin binds to transferrin receptor and transfer iron into the cell. Inside the cell iron binds to apoferritin with formation of a ferritin, and ferritin is a major storage form of iron in our body. Most cells in the body have transferrin receptor on their solar surface, but the amount of transferrin receptor is the highest on a retroblast hepatocytes and placenta cells, and the higher the amount of transferrin receptor, the higher the iron delivery to the cell. So exactly these cells are the major iron consumers in our body. So what we can actually determine? We can determine the amount of iron in the blood, so called serum iron. We can determine the amount of transferrin molecules in the blood by transferring iron binding capacity. We can determine the amount of transferrin molecules that carry iron by the percent saturation of transferrin, normally 33%. And we can determine the amount of iron in the storage size, as macrophages in the bone marrow and hepatocytes, by the amount of ferritin in the blood, so called serum ferritin, because serum ferritin basically reflects iron stores in the bone marrow macrophages and in the hepatocytes in the liver tissue. Now about the specific details, we know that iron comes with diet and according to diet resource there are two types of iron, it's heme and non-heme form of iron. So from the name it's become obvious that the major source of dietary iron is heme, which we intake during consumption of meat. Moreover, heme form of iron is more safely and more rapidly absorbed in the duodenum. We see that heme do not undergo any modifications or conversions and also duodenum has a transporter specifically for him. Because in contrast to this, inorganic iron with plus 3 charge 
has to be converted into plus 2 charge, because only plus 2 charge iron can be absorbed, and this conversion is provided by the gastric acid. So, if due to some reason the production of gastric acid by parietal cells decreases, this will cause decrease in plus 2 iron and increase in iron with plus 3 charge. And dodonum has the possibility to convert iron by cytochrome B. But what we have to realize is that cytochrome B works slowly. It's not the gastric acid that oxidizes iron massively. Cytochrome B works step by step, molecule by molecule. So this oxidation plus 3 into plus 2 takes time. And chyme in dodonum stays for a limited period of time. This time is determined by the motility of the gut, because gut contractions propel chyme further into the jejunum. So basically because cytochrome B works slowly, it does not have enough time to oxidize a substantial amount of iron. So in case if massive amount of plus 3 charge iron incoming to the duodenum, only a small portion of iron is oxidized into plus 2 state, and the major portion gets lost to the feces. Another problem is that divalent metal transporter is non-selective. DMT also transports other divalent ions as calcium, zinc and copper. So if person intake iron pills simultaneously with calcium that is contained in the milk for example, calcium will compete with iron for DMT. In relation to iron transportation, calcium will basically cause competitive inhibition of DMT, thereby iron absorption will decrease. Another problem is that if person with iron pills will intake tea for example, tannins that are contained in the tea will bind to iron with formation of tannin iron chelate complex, and in form of such complex iron cannot be absorbed. So as we see with him everything is simple. We take him from the meat and then him is absorbed by a him transporter. With inorganic iron everything is so complicated. We require a proper gastric acid secretion, also a lot of substances can decrease iron absorption. So there are a lot of reasons why heme is considered the optimal form of iron, and this makes meat the best dietary source of iron. Another important concept is that actually we can easily uptake iron, but in fact once iron incoming to the blood, it's very difficult to get rid of iron. Physiologically we lose iron only when our skin slot off, or women also lose iron with menstruation. It's basically the only options how we can decrease the amount of iron in our organism. And the most interesting thing is that as we see iron is always binded to proteins. In our tissues iron is binded to ferritin, in our blood iron is binded to transferrin, in our macrophages as we'll see further iron is binded to hemosiderin. So iron is always binded. And the reason is that free iron is a really dangerous substance. Ferrous iron, which is iron with plus 2 charge, can induce oxidation of hydrogen peroxide that results in formation of ferric iron with plus 3 charge, hydroxide anion and most important hydroxyl radical is produced. Hydroxyl radical is a highly reactive free radical, which is much more dangerous than hydrogen peroxide for example. And accumulation of hydroxyl radicals will cause oxidative stress that results in severe oxidative damage. This reaction called Fenton reaction, and exactly this feature makes free iron so dangerous. So to prevent this in our organism, iron is always binded to proteins. <laughs>